Okay, um, start off with the uh, the Boise game here. It's game week, which is uh, good. I'm sure uh, everybody's excited for that. The kids are, fans are. I'm sure both teams are excited to get to the position to be able to uh, be ready to play a football game against uh, another colored helmet, another colored jersey. So it's an exciting time. You know, the preparation will just con continue through game week this week, and we'll get ready to go. We understand exactly the, the challenges that we're getting on to Jumping on that bus on Friday to go play Boise, and it's a tremendous opportunity to play against a great football team with a tremendous tradition, and we're excited about the opportunity. I'll jump in there, Coach. Uh, I saw that you uh, officially named Jason Shelley as the starter. Can you just talk a little bit about what separated him out and uh, what qualities he brings to the team? Yeah, well, you know, Jason has some experience playing in games and, uh, you know, it was a very competitive camp. Um, I expect them both to play. I think that should be the, the first part of this is that, uh, you know, Jason's done a good job and I think that uh, Andrew's done a good job also. And there has been some back and forth, uh, which we expect, and they both want to play and they both want to compete. Um, but, you know, Jason will go out and take the next snap, but it's, it's not uh, – off the table at all to have Andrew come in and play. And I think they both deserve an opportunity to have a chance to be able to compete. And I think that they uh, have a great relationship with each other. And the quarterback room is in, in a good, solid place as far as uh, how they've handled the competition. Now, how they go out and react and how they play is the next step. So i um, excited to see them compete, um, play at that position and uh, play to the best of their abilities, just like the rest of the team. But you have to compete and play every single week. And just because somebody gets named a starter, takes the first snap one week, doesn't mean it's going to consistently be that way throughout the throughout the year. Um, every young man, every position on this team gets to compete every week. And I think our kids are getting a true grasp of that and a true understanding um, of exactly where they sit. But I'm excited to watch the quarterbacks play, just as like I'm excited to watch – the center, the corner, the safety, the defensive lineman, everybody that's out there. I'm excited to see all those kids get out and have an opportunity to compete and play. But uh, that's, I guess that's where I'd say we'd sit with that position and with all the positions on this team going into game one. Did having a little bit of um, starting experience help Jason a little bit in, in getting that first nod? Oh, I, yeah, I, I sure, yeah, I guess that helps. Yeah, I would say yes to that question. Um, is it a difference maker in the end to say that's why he's starting? Absolutely not. Um, there's been... Again, I go back to it. I think they've both really have come a long ways just being around their team. And it was new for Jason to be on with a new team and all new faces. But it was also different for Andrew to be in this position to, you know, lead his team, whether he's going with the first group or the second group. And, you know, he's in a position that he hasn't been in to be competing for the starting job for a number of years and to be in a position to be expected to go in and play. And, you know, like we've told them all along, and it's not just a cliche, it's more so this year than any year, everybody needs to be able to play, but uh, we expect both quarterbacks to be able to play and we're excited to see, you know, how they handle the game day, how they handle their team. Hey coach, it seems like Justice Tate has been around USU football forever. Uh, and it's, it's nice to have that kind of experience on that defensive line. What has he meant with a lot of other newcomers or, or guys that are stepping into more significant roles on that defensive line? Well, it, that's, that's a great, comment or question, however you want to put it, uh, he has been a huge part of what we're trying to get done um, with just the cohesiveness of a defensive line that is uh, new for the most part. Right? I mean, uh, Sone's back in there and he's, he's healthy, which is great to have him in there. And Marcus is playing on the other side, but Marcus is new to our program. And Justice has kind of been just the the solid guy in there that comes to work every day and he pushes the young kids and, you know, it's his job to hold those young kids accountable to a, at a high level um, on the field and off the field. And I think he's really taken pride in that this year to let those young kids understand that this is the way that we want it to be as a coaching staff, uh, the way that he wants it to be as a, as a leader of not just that group of kids, but as the defense as a whole and quite frankly, the football team. So he's done a tremendous job. Uh, great work ethic, toughness, loves football, got a big smile on his face to know that it's an opportunity to go compete um, and play games this week. So he's a, he's a very, very solid leader on this football team. We expect him to be very, very good when he gets out there on the football field and, and plays at a high level on game day, and we're looking forward to see that happen.
Hey, Coach. Um, we all know that Boise State, they're kind of the top dog in the Mountain West, and uh, if you want a chance at winning the league, you got to go through them. So what does this game mean for the program, and how challenging is it that you got to play them um, first game of the season? Well, it's always a tremendous challenge, and, and Boise has – earned that. They deserve that. Uh, that's, that's exactly where they are. And, you know, as I go through my career, we've been in those different situations as a staff. And, you know, sometimes you're in that position to be that top team and everybody's trying to knock you off. And, and we've been there. Um, it's extremely challenging. Every week, every week, uh, everybody's nipping at you and, and wants to take your spot of where you sit. And again, that's well deserved by Boise. You know, on our side of our league, you know, we're all trying to get to that conference game, that conference championship to be able to but to be able to play in the uh, the championship game, but in our league, you, you gotta it goes through Boise, and you just look at the past, whatever it may be, uh, five six years. You know those guys are right there at the end every single year. So it's a tremendous challenge, but it's a, it's a challenge that we look forward to as as a measuring stick and to understand where we've gone and where we've been and, and where we have to go and um, what that three hours and change is going to to bring to us as a program. We're excited to get out there and compete. We expect to go out there and compete at a high level, just as I'm sure they do. Um, you know, th this year has been different for everybody, but uh, at the end of the day, these kids get a lineup against e each other with. Uh, Boise versus Utah State for three hours and a little bit of change on the on the backside of that, and we'll we'll see exactly where we sit, and they'll see exactly where they sit. But uh, you know they're they're a, a tremendous program, and uh, you know they've fought at a high level for many many years, and that's impressive to see it. And we're looking forward to again measuring ourselves against the best of the best for the past years, uh, maybe decade or longer. I would say it's been a long time. Hey, Coach, you mentioned that it's been different for everybody this year. I'm just curious to know, how does it feel different this year going into a game week? Did it feel like this would ever actually occur? Uh, there was times when we really didn't think it uh, would occur. That There was pretty much no chance that it was going to occur. And then it kind of flipped on us, which is a great thing. And um, first of all, I'm, I'm really happy that the kids get a play um, all over the country, not just at Utah State, not just in the Mountain West. I'm, I'm happy kids get a play as many games as it's safe for them to play and the opportunity presents itself and they should take advantage of that. And that's an, and I believe that they are. Um, secondly, you know, it, it, it's, it's a challenge every day. And, you know, may, maybe our challenges are different than others, but it is absolutely a challenge every day. Um, you sit back and, you know, just the, the number of kids in the program and how you're training them and how you're working with the strength staff, the trainers, the doctors to try to keep them as healthy as they can, but yet still prepare them for a football game. You know, I've, I've, I've told the team and the staff a couple of times that we've gone through here, it's, it's almost like you were, you were taking a class that was a difficult class in college and, you know, you forgot when the uh, when the final was, and all of a sudden you realize the final was tomorrow. So you're cramming all day long to get ready, um, and that forces you sometimes to push, uh, maybe too much from a physical standpoint for the kids, and and not do what's best for them. So the education that we've gotten from our trainers, Mike Williams and his staff, has just been they've been fantastic. Our strength coaches, the way that they track our kids and the mileage that's on them, and how hard they're working and what they're doing, and then obviously we talk to our young men to see where they are physically, and you know to keep them in mentally is not the hard part. They're excited about playing. Um, they're excited about these opportunities. It's just making sure we do all we can to not too put too much on them, but yet still have them ready for whatever's coming their way on game day. And you see that in in a lot of games. There's a lot of. Uh, opportunistic things that happen to teams in a good way or a bad way that are self-inflicted um, and the good things come your way because teams make mistakes. And you obviously, uh, first game, you always worry about those things, but more so this year just because of the, uh, the time frame that we're all up against, not just us at Utah State. So um, it's exciting to play, but it is very different. Um, this morning's been different. This afternoon will probably be different. Tomorrow morning's going to be different. Um, so we'll just keep battling through it. But our kids have reacted to that in a very positive way to just uh, not just discount what's taking place if a young man can't play or participate or whatever comes our way, but they, they've done a great job of moving on and be prepared to support everybody on this team, coaches as we move forward. But, uh, you know, just understand next man up is, is the real thing this year. Coach, uh, what would you say would be the biggest takeaways from the, the past two weeks of fall camp? What were the biggest strides made, position groups, et cetera, stuff of that nature? 
Yeah, if I if I just broke it down by a by a position group and a couple that have, have jumped out, I, I really like the competitiveness and the toughness of our back end on defense. Uh, we've dealt with some issues back there as far as getting kids at practice and staying healthy. But again, they battled through that very, very well. It's been fun to see them continually fight. I think they made great progress the last couple of years, or excuse me, last couple of weeks as far as you know, preparing themselves to, to play against what we know is going to be a top receiving core walking into the Boise game. Um, and they'll be challenged, but I think they're up for that challenge. Um, I would say we've we've done a much better job. The running back position has been very, very, very competitive. Um, I think we have as many of four to five running backs that we could put in a game as we need to put into a game. And it's been fun to watch those kids compete. And again, the way they compete, the way that Coach Schramm has handled those kids, they're all competing against each other, but there's not a bunch of attitudes. There's not a bunch of woe is me. They're they're battling to to put their best, best foot forward when they get an opportunity to, to play. I'm excited to see what they can bring to the table. Um, and then, you know, wh where we're sitting with the offensive line, there's been a lot of guys in and out and back and forth. Uh, but again, the stable of that crew that – was very young a year ago and is still very young. It's been fun to watch them, you know, grow up around each other and play different positions. Andy Koch has played three different positions in camp and who knows where that's going to be on game day. But uh, when you ask him about it, he looks at you and smiles and says, coach, I'm excited. I'll play right guard, left guard, left tackle, right tackle. I guess that could be four positions if you, if you call it that way, but it's two for sure. And Heck, we might be in there playing center for us today. Who knows what takes place? But their attitudes have been very good on that offensive line. It's been fun to watch them, you know, continually grow. Um, and again, those position groups and all of them need to match up against somebody. And this year they get to play uh, against a, a great opponent game one. So it's going to be fun to see how they physically match up, um, you know, this Saturday at five o'clock. Coach, it sounds like uh, the team actually has quite a bit of chemistry this year. Uh, did you do anything early to foster that, or how did you make that happen considering early on everybody was meeting on Zoom and um, you know position where it was tough to get the guys together with their position groups even? Yeah, well, well, I hope so. And I would hope year two that you have a team that, you know, number one, believes in themselves and has developed tight relationships with each other. You're, you're, you're never, I tell them all the time, you're, you're not going to love everybody on your team. We use that all the time and it's such a cliche in sports. And, you know, I guess there's love in sports and there's love in marriages and loves and brothers and sisters and whatever. But I think these kids truly care about each other and you know, they've worked hard against each other. They handle practice very well. Um, it's tough. You know, they want to be in that locker room. They want to sit around and talk with each each other and hang out and spend time together, but they can't. We have to shoo them and get them along their way as much as we can. But I believe they do have a, a solid chemistry right now. And, you know, a lot of that is is probably because it's it's been cut short for them. And they know that their time together with – a guarantee of eight games right here and that's not a guarantee either this year um, that they're they're really excited about the moment and they're excited about coming to practice and that credit goes to them first I think it goes to the assistant coaches second we've worked extremely hard to you know build relationships which again has been tested this year there's been no barbecues at coaches houses there's been no you know our, our big get-togethers that we have that we were able to put together and our team has dinners together and we hang out together whatever it may be those have not taken place and so uh, position coaches, I think, have done a great job. I've worked my tail off to try to build relationships of trust with these kids. And, um, and I think our young men have, have worked hard to you know, build that chemistry. And that chemistry will get tested um, in a lot of different ways. It gets tested with wins. It gets tested with losses. It gets tested with competition at positions. Um, and we have had a number of just situations that have happened this year. And it doesn't have anything to do with uh, – COVID sickness or anything like that as far as within our own team and our structure, but we've had a lot on the outside of kids just going through tough times with family situations. And um, I think our kids have put our arms around each other and, you know, uh, supported us when we're going through tough times of families, whatever it may have been. Um, and I think Jake Garlock and the administration have done a tremendous job of helping our kids in those situations get back to um, homes when they need to get back home and spend a couple days with uh, family when it's been needed. And we've had a lot of that this year, which you never like to see, but at least I think we've reacted as positive as we can in those situations. Coach, uh, Boise State has three returning all-conference performers in the secondary. What do you see from that secondary that makes it so uh, so tough? Really good players. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of talent back there, speed, athleticism. 
great knowledge. Um, they, they play the scheme the right way. It's, it's hard to identify exactly what they're doing and how they've got things going in the back end pre-snap, which is what a good defense does. It's designed to frustrate and, and give a quarterback concerns pre-snap. Um, and along with the wide receivers, is their pre-snap identification of what type of coverage it may be or which way the safeties are rolling or what have you to get too technical. So um, we're very well coached, um, very good scheme. And uh, obviously the coaches did a great job of, of recruiting good athletes back in there and, and they've turned into great football players. And that's what you do when you try to recruit. So uh, those kids are competitive, tough minded kids and, and they're excited to play. And I, I believe that, you know, they'll they'll have their shots at the next level also. So it, it'll be fun to, again, match our kids up against that and see how we react against what was, you know, the, the best secondary that, that we saw last year in our league and uh, potentially right up there again this year with those kids all returning. Coach, looking at the defensive depth chart, um, a theme that I kind of saw is speed. There's a lot of speed on that defense. Is that in intentional? And what are you guys kind of hoping for from uh, from this defense? Yeah, I think that uh, you know it's a, it's a big thing on defense is to recruit kids that can run and then let them grow and develop to to where they're going to be. And you know, a year ago when we had that giant recruiting class that we brought in with 50 plus kids the, the goal was to get longer and to get faster and um, you know we had holes to fill obviously with that number but hopefully some of that shows up when we get out there on the field as we're able to compete as we go through these next eight weeks together that uh, that we, we are longer on the football field and we are faster in all positions but on defense that was a real it was a real push and we've got a bunch of young kids that are, are, are battling to to get into spots and we've got some older kids that are trying to help them continually grow and develop and, and get into a position to um, compete and to play uh, in our conference but I would say this I think our they're running to the ball well. I think Coach Collins and Coach Miley have done a great job along with the rest of the defensive staff to be able to get these kids understanding how hard you need to play on the defensive side of the ball consistently. And, you know, we we did take some shots, uh, especially up on the defensive front with kids graduating. And so our ability to be able to get those kids that uh, we've recruited on the field, regardless of age and competing at a high level and running and working together has been you know, impressive against ourselves. Now we've got to go out and tackle live for the first time in a game. We've got to be able to, you know, handle a, a, a team that gives you a lot of shifts and motions and a lot of really good things on offense that can cause confusion to young players. I think we've handled that, but uh, the speed is good. Uh, I think that they're, they're, they want to play at a high level and they're going to be given that opportunity against a high level team on Saturday. Coach, uh Boise State has a very experienced running back, George Halani. He had a big game against the Aggies and several other teams, for that matter, last year. Uh, how, ad how advantageous is it to have an experienced, proven weapon at that position? Well, it's George is a great player. I mean, he proved that week in and week out. Now, when we say that, um, I'm sure he would be the first one or any great running back would be the first one to say he had a heck of an offensive line and a, and a heck of a, a tight end crew last year with him and, and an offense that gave him an opportunity to be very, very successful. But he's talented, he's tough, he's physical, he's fast. Um, I think he reads very, very well as far as getting in and out of his cuts. He's got great hips, so he's a, he's a tremendous football player. Um, he had a great supporting cast last year with him, and I'm sure he'll have a great supporting cast with him this year as well. So he's a guy you have to be able to contend with. Um, you know, the running back position to me is it's not just one person. I'm sure that there's two or even three that they have that they feel very good about getting out on the field. George is the, the highlighted one, I would assume, at this point, coming back from a year ago. But I'm sure they'll have a couple other young men in there that are, that are very good players, which a good back needs. He needs that comp. Compliment. And, uh, you know, they, they have some new offensive linemen playing, but uh, I'm sure they've built those kids up as they've gone through the program and, and, and are ready to put those kids out on the field and new faces to help George to be able to run the ball effectively. So um, that's a big part of Boise's game. And, uh, you know, we'll have to tackle well. We'll have to play great within our gaps. And you got to hang in with Boise for four quarters, right? It's going to be a fist fight. And that's the best thing I like about it. We need to learn how to get into those fist fights, play complimentary football, and be able to deal with it for four quarters. And because, again, Again, if you're going to win our side or have an opportunity to win our side, you have to be that tough physical team that plays four quarters, deals with adversity, and, and can fight like crazy. And uh, that's how Boise's built. And you're not going to walk in there and just wow them and say, oh, my goodness, it's just, uh, you know, went our way and we just kind of tricked them to a victory. No, nope, that's it's never going to happen with Boise State. you got to earn your way. And I'm excited to, to line up against those guys again and see how we compete. And, and George will be a big test.
Coach, how do you feel about your field goal unit after Dominic Eberle has uh, left the program now? Dom's a big hit. We all know that. Um, you know, but I feel Connor's done a really good job of kicking the ball. Um, and, and it's been it's been interesting just to get the timing of the new kids and uh, those three kids work in unison. It's, it's snapper, holder, kicker, you know, and, and Chris is going to hold it for us. Pot is going to snap it for us. And it's going to be it'll be interesting to see. Connor has, has, has been on a roll lately. Uh, again, he's got to get into games and be able to get that done. I think our protection, we work hard as far as you know protecting those kids and we'll we'll get edge pressure and we'll get pressure up the middle again from Boise they're going to be aggressive with long levered kids that can run in that spot so they'll get a big test in this game uh, but I feel good about it you know I feel I feel good about our kickers uh, all throughout the whole process and um, but it'll be a, it's a big loss with a great player and now it's the next young man's chance to step up so I expect Chris and his crew to to kick the ball well and we know what his range is and we're going to give him opportunities to roll and yeah, the ball may be wet, it may be windy, it may be really cold on Saturday, but uh, you know it may change too and be 50 and calm. So we'll see. He's got to be ready for whatever's coming his way. Coach, you're in the unusual situation this season. Everything's unusual. This season. <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. That <laughs> uh, you know, with that you've had some Saturdays and Sundays to watch football um, being played during the pandemic. Uh, have you learned anything from the NFL or the other, other college teams that have played on how to handle kind of the ups and downs that might come with playing in a season during a virus when you don't know when you'll have a game and when you won't? Yeah, I, I think there's there's a lot to be learned on TV. There's a lot to be learned by making phone calls and listening. You know, one of the things that's it's going to be strange, and this may sound crazy to, to people, but how – Without fans, it's going to be, you know, there's piped in crowd noise. Well, what does that, what does that feel like? And, you know, we practice every day in the stadium and it's, it's uh, obviously doesn't have people in there, but the game day, getting out for your game day, you know, pre, pre game is going to be very different. We've talked about that and other coaches have brought that up to me. It's just how strange it is to hear the other sideline during a game yelling and screaming at their kids and getting kids lined up and communicating differently than they ever have before because you can. Um, so that, that'll, be, that'll be really interesting to handle. Is that going to win or lose you a game? No, but it'll be interesting, and we've talked about that. Um, you know, just the, the, the understanding that you really need to have – you could lose two or three kids in one position group in, in the snap of a finger when you test three times a week like we are, and, you know, we're going through that. Every, every day we come back and you get hit here, you get hit there, and, and kids need to answer that. So I've, I've talked to coaches on how they go about it. And then lastly, I would say when you watch TV, I've never stopped my uh, TV, rewound it, and taped as many plays on my phone um, that ever than I have this last couple of weeks. And that may be a, a blocked punt. It may be, you know, a surprise on side. It may be a pop-up kick on kickoff. A lot of them have come on special teams where those last so situations come up that usually you've done, I don't know, six, seven, 10, 15 times throughout spring ball and through fall camp that uh, you've right now only been able to do one or two times just because of timing. So um, again, no one's, no one's going to have those as excuses, but it goes back to the whole functionality of working the kids to get them as prepared as they possibly can for the moment. So, you know, it's uh, the, the norm is different. The norm is strange. Some days are uh, right as you would expect them to be. And, you know, some days like today, we had to completely flip up the practice schedule today to make it fit our kids to keep them in the best spot to be able to be healthy and be prepared for the Boise game. And um, we'll handle it as coaches and the kids will handle it too. So a lot to be learned and we'll continue to learn every day, every minute, every second. Anything else for Coach Anderson? Okay, guys, I appreciate you all very much. Have a great week. Go Aggies. All right, so man, game week, you know, preparing well. A lot of new faces this week, so we, you know, got to get going. But can't have a lot of mess ups, a lot of errors. So it's time to get right. Shaq, uh, the last couple of years, Boise State's had a lot of success running the ball against uh, against the Aggies. Uh, how motivated are you guys to shore that up, that run that run defense this weekend? Oh, uh, we're we're very motivated. Um, you know, all practice, all week, we've been working on just tackling, tackling, tackling. Make sure we stop the run first. You know, sideline to sideline, a lot of people aren't going to be able to beat us this year. Uh, defense is way faster than last year, all across the board. So, I'm I'm pretty excited to see how we tackle this week. 
Shaq, Boise is a uh, huge game for you guys. Um, you're 0-2 in your career against Boise. They're the best team in the league. What does it mean to get to play these guys, get another shot at them, and uh, play in the first game of the season? Oh, it's a it's a, a big shot, you know. Uh, third time's a charm. You know, people always say that, but we're not too worried about the last two years. It's always for now. So, you know, we're just going to keep going with the present. Jack, you've started 21 games in uh, in your career. How important is it for you to keep that streak going? And um, how does how has that helped your play? Or how do you expect to help your play this season? Um, I mean, it's been cool to start all 21 games um, that I've been able to play. But it really don't matter who starts as long as we get the job done. But it, it's a big confidence booster, uh, you know, to just know that I'm getting the job done each, you know, each a year. Jack, you talked about that uh, that experience in trying to stop the run, but that experience secondary that you guys have uh, could really play a big factor in the slowing down a passing game and giving that uh, inexperienced defensive line of yours a chance to get to the opposing quarterbacks. What's that, that that unit been like with all that experience you guys have back in the secondary for USU? Uh, it's it's going to be great this um, this upcoming game day. Uh, we got a lot of speed in the back end this year. You know, we had a couple guys hurt last year, injured but they back on the field this year. We got some young guys stepping up and with the D line, them being new, new ish, but they, they ready for sure. Can you give us any insight uh, into the quarterbacks? You've kind of probably gotten to have a front row seat into, into how both of them are doing and how do you feel like, what kind of hands are you in as far as the quarterback position goes? Uh, we're in great hands with both of our quarterbacks, no matter who's in the game. Uh, both of them in practice make great throws, great decisions, you know, and whoever starts, whoever goes out there first or second, whatever the case may be, we, we feel like we're in good hands with either one. Shaq, uh, Cash Gilliam, you, you played alongside him last year. Uh, he's played a lot of safety over the years. Uh, <laughs> what does that say about his competitive nature and his coachability that he was able to win a uh, starting inside linebacker position. Oh, that that's big for Cash. You know, um he didn't get a lot of reps last year. He had ended up getting hurt um San Diego State week, the week of that game and uh but him to bounce back and then come in and start at the backer position, that's that's a very coachable player right there. You know, he came in, he been watching film a lot, asking coaches a lot of questions, trying to learn the defense and the last few weeks he's been very good and like I said, sideline to sideline is going to be very hard this year. Jack, Hank Batchmeyer and uh, the Boise State um, receiving corps, they got a lot of dudes, a lot of weapons. How exciting is it for you and Troy as leaders in the, sa in the safety positions to kind of lead the team and figure out how to stop this uh, passing attack? Uh, it's going to be big. You know, uh, this year I feel like me and Troy have both stepped up as field generals, you know, just gathering pieces around us. And those pieces is fitting in great. You know, uh, our corners is ready. We got some some speedy speedy corners this year, so we're ready for everything. Anything else for Shaq? Okay. Shaq, no. Oh, go super ahead, quick. Go ahead. Last question. Hey, what do you what do you think about the Smurf turf? Playing at Boise State, what do you think about their field? Uh, this will be my first time actually, so I I'm excited because I never got to play there. So, um, Boise, uh, guys are locked in. Uh, guys are ready to play ball. Um, I feel like the guys uh went through fall camp, did their thing, and I'm pretty much excited to go out there and work. Questions for Jason? I'll jump in. Jason, how are you feeling about uh, this first start and, and going to Boise and uh, kind of having kicking off the the Aggie season on your shoulders? Um, I feel pretty confident. Um, I know uh, I believe in the guys, and the guys seem to believe in me. So I'm going out there with complete confidence, ready to uh, showcase my skills and give it to Boise. Jason, how how comforting is it to have a 
you have a, a lot of experienced guys back at offensive line, guys that weren't really experienced a year ago, but they gained a lot of valuable experience. That, how comforting is that, have that going into this new situation? Um, it's very comforting knowing that uh, they got guys up there that's been there, done that, and um, just knowing that I have guys to protect me at all times. And it's very, very relieving and comforting to go out there and just play ball and not have to worry about getting hit around. Jason, what was that quarterback competition like for you? Um, very competitive. Um, Peasley is a great quarterback, great athlete. Um, does a very pretty ball. And uh, he gave me good competition to go out there and I had to be on my, my, my best every day, come out there and not have any days off. So it was a great push. Jason, how do you see your role in the passing game, but also in the running game for this offense? Um, I see my role being just, you know, whatever, pretty much whatever the game plan has. Uh, if we have a day where we feel like we can run the ball effectively, um, I can add to that. And then if we have to throw it in the air 30, 40 times a game, I could do that too. And I feel like uh, our receivers and our running backs are also with the game plan. They're all going to be willing to adjust. Some days they might not get what they want, but – you know, they do whatever is best for the team, and I feel like I can just bring them, lead them to victory. Jason, what is, what is your time at uh, Utah uh, helped you along to put you in this spot to be able to uh, start for the Aggies? Um, I learned a lot from Utah. Um, I learned a lot about competing every day. Um, I had to go out there and compete every day uh, just to win a number two job. So um, that, that came with a lot of experience and just being able to – lead. Um, I've kind of grown into more of a leader since uh, I've gone from Utah. I know what it's like learning from uh, Tyler Huntley at Utah. And I just felt like I needed to bring that over to the Aggie Nation and do what I can do. Jason, how does it feel to finally uh, put on an Aggie uniform and play a real football game? And how does it feel to do it against um, probably the best team in the league in Boise State? Um, it feels good to just put on some Aggie blue first off. I'm grateful for it. And uh, secondly, just going out there and playing against Boise. I don't know. I'm really juiced up over here. I'm just ready to go on the bus ride to Boise, to be honest with you. I'm ready. to. Can't wait until Friday. Anything else for Jason? Uh, one last one real quick. Jason, just your uh, – how has it been trying to develop that relationship with the wide receivers? Um, you're, you're, you're new to the to, to the uh, to the roster, and you've had to develop some chemistry with these guys. What's that been like for you so far? Um, I feel like it's been pretty smooth. Um, my roommate's Justin McGriff, so first off, I had him right away, and you know he he was here in the summer before I was, so he got a, kind of brought a couple guys with us. So whenever we worked out, you know, bringing all the receivers as many as we can out there. So you know, when I first got there, I went straight to work. Pretty much um, started calling guys, trying to get some throws in. I feel like, you know, kind of made up for some lost time with me coming in the middle of July instead of May. So I just feel comfortable with the guys. We got some work in the summer. Fall camp was very effective. We took every rep serious, and we'll be ready for Saturday. Um, I feel like camp went pretty good uh, all around. Uh, had some good competition with the QB spot for sure. Uh, me and Jason, you know, going at it every day. And then you also had Cooper and Josh and Garrett uh, behind us pushing us. So all around, I feel like our offense had a good camp. And, yeah. Andrew, uh, just uh, how close to 100% healthy do you feel? How, how's that knee doing? Uh, I felt 100% probably in March. I uh, finished up PT and – I got my weight back up and I feel really good, so. Andrew, yeah. Coach said that you'd both be seeing, um, they expected you both to see playing time. How do you keep that consistency with the team and, and have you and Jason worked on that at all to try to make it so it's not much of a difference when one's in versus the other? Um, you know, I feel like we both just prepare um, before practice and then before this game too. And I feel like that Everyone on the team trusts us as quarterbacks. So when that time does come, uh, I'll be ready and Shelly will be ready. So, Andrew, 
Andrew, can you talk a little bit about the camaraderie on the team and how it compares to last year? Um, I feel like last year our team was pretty close. We uh, we all got along and stuff, but something feels a little different this year. I feel like in a positive way, we've taken another step, just kind of getting along and coming together as a group of guys. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited for this uh, game this week and for the rest of the season. So... Andrew, how do you feel about playing Boise State? They're the top dogs in the league. What's this challenge like for you guys and uh, to go out there on Saturday? Um, you know, we put in our game plan, kind of got a few days ahead last week. Uh, I feel like it's really good for the offense. Um, and, you know, we've been watching film, we've been studying, we've been preparing. So I feel like after this week of practice, we'll all be ready to go. Andrew, who are some of the guys during fall camp offensively who have really, uh, you really feel like it's taken a big step forward in uh, their grasp of the offense and, and, and their skill development? Um, I feel like the running backs have definitely taken a step. Um, and, you know, that's on the O line too. But we've been able to run the ball really well. And then another guy, it would be Justin for me. He was a uh, McGriff. He was coming in, you know, in the summer and, uh, he's a big, tall receiver, and I feel like he fits really well with our offense, and we have a lot of trust with him. So 